Good morning, Murai Mirabotai. We are continuing our Masechet Avod and we are holding on Dav Tetzai in Amud 15 lines down from the top of the Amud. Today's Amud is being learned. The Shud Yehoshua ben Diana, Yel Badrivka, Menashe ben Asi. Today's Amud is also being learned for Refua Shelema of Yaakov Meir ben Nahid. This Amud is being learned um, for Refua Shelema of Shana Ahava. But Sharona is there, should have a baby, should have Refua Shelema. Amen. Today's Amud is also being learned for Hatzlacha of Behruz David ben Parivash, that should be Matzliach in every endeavor that he does. So we are amidst a sugya of selling stuff to the Goim, and we discuss the question of Agalim, Siachim. So this is almost 10 lines down before we start actually the, the, the new topic. Says the Gemara, Agalim v'siachim, that he can't sell the baby donkeys and, and, and calves to the goyim. Tanya says the, the Gemara we learned in the Brayta. Rabbi Yehuda matir b'shvura. Rabbi Yehuda says it's mutar to sell at the end of our Mishnah we had an exception to the rule that Rabbi Yehuda introduced that if you have an animal that's completely lame, is shvura, can't do anything, can't even work. So the problem of selling to a goy is they're going to work with it and then we had the, the issues of uh, working on Shabbat, on Yom Tov, or maybe out of Shabbat selling it last minute and the animal is going to walk with it um, and, and, and so on. That would be the problem. So if you have a behemah, that's shvura. If you have an animal that can't work, why is the goy buying it? And so Rebbe Yudah says it's mutar because it's not going to work with it. It's going to shecht it and that's what's going to be, right? So says the Gemara, Mi peleshen ha-yechola lehitrapeot, because it can't be healed once it's lame like this. It can't live normal life. It can't be having refuah shelema. So what are they going to do with it? They're going to shecht it. Amrulo, the Chachamim told Rabbi Yehuda, you say that they got to shecht it because they can't do anything else with it. But I could give you an example of something they could do with it. They could have it as a a female that gives birth to the next generation of donkeys or, or cows. So that they could do. Says the They could put it with a zakhar and then she would give birth to the new generation. So they could use it as, as a nursery, so to speak. Says the Gemara, the kevan de marbin aleha yoledet atu lishayuye. And once they could do this, they're going to keep it. Once they're going to keep it, what's going to happen? The whole problem, remember, was that people are going to make a mistake that if you sold your animal to the goy, your next door neighbor, Reuben, is going to see your animal by the goy. Because people used to have uh, recognition of animals. Oh, this is Reuben's animal. This is Shimon's cow. When they see your cow by the, by the goy, they say, oh, I didn't know that you could rent your animal or you could lend your animal to the goy. So I, perhaps you could. And when they're going to rent or lend their animal to the goy and they're going to come to work on Shabbat, that will be the problem. That's the whole issue. So Rabbi Yehuda says, well, if it's Shvura, then there's not going to be any issues because they're going to shecht it right away. Nobody's going to see it by the goy's house because the goy is buying a broken animal for what? Must be, he's going to shecht it. So he's going to shecht it. No Jew is going to ever see this animal in the house of the goy to come to make this mistake of thinking that you could lend or rent your animal to the goy. Right? So hence, says Rabbi Yehuda, Shevura would be mutar. The Mara says, no, they're not going to necessarily shecht it. I give you a scenario that the animal of the Yid, of the Jew, is going to stay in the house of the goy for a long time. Why? Because they're going to buy it and use it as a nursery. Use it to get to, to be impregnated and, and, and give birth to the next generation of calves and, 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 and donkeys, and therefore it will become a problem. And since they could do this, they're going to come to keep it, and once they keep it, 
It's going to become a problem. Amar lahen Rabbi Yehuda answers them, lich shet telid. It says when, when he gives birth. Basically he's saying he's not going to give birth. Not because a terefa can't give birth. That's a, a sugya, a discussion in the Gemara itself. Elsewhere, whether or not a terefa, an animal that has been damaged for good and is not going to live a long time, wh- whether or not they could give birth, that's not necessarily the reference of the Gemara. The Gemara says when an animal is shvura, it's not mekabelet zahar. Lo mekabelet zahar. They are not going to accept to, to be pre, you know, pregnant from a, an animal, the male animal, and therefore it's not going to happen. So says the Gemara, the other exception to the rule that we had was Ben Betara, the very end of Mishnah says Matir Basus. Ben Betara said all the Isur that we have by Bemagasa, by a larger animal, is by donkeys, by cows, but a horse you could do. Why? So we explained in the Mishnah the reason being that a horse does not carry loads. So it does not do any melacha that is considered an Isur on Shabbat. Right? It's not considered an Isur on Shabbat. Because the only thing that they used to use the horse for was to ride on it. Now, when you're riding on a horse, you're carrying your, your own weight because not, it's not considered a load. Chai no set atzmo is a concept of a, um, a, a, an animal carrying its own weight. Okay, and a human being, so a living being carrying its own weight when they're riding on an animal. So it's not considered a load. So says the Gemara, thank you. Says the Gemara, um, Ben Betera says, because of that, it's mutar to, to sell a horse because your issue, your issue of, of having an animal work on Shabbat is not, never going to happen with a horse. So, it's be, so that you don't have that, and you don't have any other issues for selling a horse. What would be the potential issue for selling a horse to, to a goy? So says the Gemara, let's, let's do this together. Tanya ben betera matir besus, mi pereshu ose osabo melacha, she el chayavin aleha chatat. Because the only issue that you have with riding a horse on Shabbat, why is it asur to ride a horse on Shabbat? Not because it's considered a isur do oraita, a melacha do oraita, but it's just the isur de rabanan. Because once you're on a horse, you want to control the horse, so you may come to break a branch off a tree to hit it and to control it, and that's why it's asur to, to ride a horse on Shabbat. Right? What Ayyivamot says, okay, it's a sugya talk discussing a um, timely punishment. So Gwara says, sometimes, bedin, makin v'un shin shilom minadin. Sometimes they, they, they punish, not because you deserve that punishment, but because the generation deserves that punishment. And Gwara gives two examples. One was, they, they brought to the Betin, a person that rode a horse on Shabbat, and they killed him. And Moras is not because when you ride a horse on Shabbat, you're chayav mita. That's not a, a, biblical, uh, a biblical transgression. It's only the Rabbanan. But what, what was happening was, everyone was becoming lax in, in, in this area of Isur of Shabbat. They said, ah, the Rabbanan, and they, that breaches the whole thing of, of keeping Shabbat properly. Like, like think about it. Unfortunately, nowadays you can see the, the greatness of, of, of the, the mind of Chachmei Israel. You know, a number of years ago, it started that uh, some people, uh, you know, it's not even a, a proper thing to discuss, but, but some people in, the, uh, in certain circles started like saying, ah, phones and Shabbat, it's not even clear what the Isur is, and so, and so on and so forth. You know, electricity of, uh, you know, it doesn't have any lights. It's all LED, and it's not any, you know, the, the truth is, Shoz Arma Orbach in the in Milchat Shlomo, Chelek Aleph, Siman Yud Bet, has a discussion. He's not even sure what this exact issue of, of thing is. And people started, like, you know, using the phone here, there, and different things. And now you have, before you know it, you have a whole thing of a pirza in, in Chalakim of Klal Yisrael, that they, they, you know, they, they're not as careful in that, in that way. 
and it has brought a real destruction to the um, spirit and to the actual even keeping of, of Shabbat. So Chazal are very much mindful of that. That's why you need a Bedin, where we cry on these things and, and, um, and Tisha B'Av, because we don't unfortunately have a proper, uh, proper Sanhedrin, a proper Bedin. At the, so the Mara says there, not because he deserved it, but because Hador Tzri Chalika, it was the generation was going down so, so rapidly in that area, they had to make a, um, an example out of it, which is a, a tremendous sugya by itself. So says the Mara, what would be the problem of selling a horse on, 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 um, to, to a goy? If he works on Shabbat, it's not a real Isur Melacha. It's not a Melacha de Oraita. It's a Melacha she'en chayavin alea chatat. The Rebbe Oser, says the Mara, Rebbe disagrees with Ben Betera. Why? Mi pene bet devarim. Two reasons. A, echad mishum torat kelizain. One, because it's asur to sell weapons and ammunition to the goy, which we discussed before. Ve echad mishum torat be magasa. And also because of selling a be magasa. There are two isurim that we discussed, both of them in the previous daf. One was the isur of selling swords and, and, and blades and spears and, and, and arrows and so on, ammunition and weapons to the goyim. So it says Rabbi, a sus could be considered Torat Kelezayin, it could be considered a weapon. And at the, at the same time, it's still considered a Behemagasa. Now, Behemagasa, the problem is carrying loads. We just said that the sus does not carry loads, carries people. And Rebbe agrees that carrying people is not a problem. So we have to explain what Rebbe holds. Says, says the Gemara. Bishlama, the Gemara says, I could understand Torah Kelizain. I could understand why a horse could be a problem because of weapons. Because they used to train their horses. You have to imagine the way the art of warfare was back in the day. You had people on foot, you had archers, and you had people on horse and carriages. That, that's how it was. So when the heat of the milchama would happen, you would have people on foot with swords, and you had people going through those, uh, those individuals or on a horse. And one of the things that you needed to do was, um, when, when they fell down, you wanted to, f to finish them, basically. And they would, they would teach their horse, train their, 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 their horses that they would use for milchama, that they should walk over and step on, and even in some cases go up with the two hands. Rashi says, and and hit and and kill with their with their with their hands, um, you know, s smashing the people to the ground. So that was that wasn't just your your spear and your sword when you were on the horse. The horse itself was a tank. The horse itself was considered a kelezain. So I can not understand why you can't sell. A horse, because it, it itself was used as a killing machine. So that, that I understand. What is the issue of a magasa? We just got finished saying that a horse does not carry loads. It carries people, and that's, that's okay. Because that's a Yisur the Rabbanan. Says the Gemara, you know what they do with uh, nowadays when the horses become old, they give them to the to the petting zoos and to the uh, farms that people vi visit, that people go pet them, and, and you make money out of selling the food that you have to feed your own animals. It's a genius idea. But back in the day, what do you think they did with the old horse? The old horse is not good for milchama. So they would use them. They wouldn't just let them eat and, and not produce. So they w it's a strong animal still. So they would tie them to a rahaim, to a meal, and they would, they would grind with it, which is a isur do raita on Shabbat. So therefore, if, you're, if your horse is seen by the goy, people say, oh, you could, you know, you could do that. And they, they may end up lending their old horse to the goy and come to to do that, that, that type of melacha, which would be a isur, all right? So says the Gemara, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Halacha keben betera. Halacha is like be betera, says Rabbi Yochanan, that you can sell a horse to a goy, it's not asur, um, like a cow and a donkey. So says the Gemara, Ibaya lehu, Shor shel patam mahu. What's the halacha by Shor shel patam? What would be a Shor shel patam? You know, they used to have in the time of Chazal, I think it, still they have it by, by um, 
and by whale that they they they, they sell, um, you know, they, they want to sell a fat first caught meat. And the, the way they used to do it was they would limit the movement of the, the cow. They would confine them in a very small room and they would just feed them. Feed them, feed them until they became really, really, really fat. And that would, of course, be used for shechita because, you know, um, unlike what you think, the animals that run around wild na in, in the nature, they actually are not so yummy because um, it's all muscles, and muscles are not, it's hard to cook, it, it's, it takes much longer, and it's more difficult to chew on, and so on and so forth. So therefore, uh, even though that it may be very strong and very healthy, so to speak, but it's not necessarily very delicious and um, cost effective. So it would, it would be kedai for them to be mepatem de shor, to fatten them, and then it would be a lot of fat there, and it would be delicious. So that, that's the, that they used to do that for avazim, for, for, um, for geese, for ducks, and for cows. But the problem is, once you're mefatem the shore, it's very unhealthy. Can't, they can't work a thing. They can't even walk normally if they're so fat. So therefore, if you sell a shore patam to a goy, maybe there is room to say, well, it should be mutar, because they're not going to work with this. The thing can't even walk normally. So for sure the guy is going to buy it for shechita, and therefore it should be mutar. That, that's the argument. So says the Gemara, in the Bet Midrash, they ask the question, Shor shel patam mahu? What's the halacha of shor shel patam? Can you or can you not sell a shor shel patam to the guy? The argument for selling it or not selling it really is a question, both according to Rabbi Yehuda and Chachamim. Right? Should be a question. So says the Gemara, Gemara presents how this is a question regardless of who you hold like. Says the Gemara, This is a question that stands both according to Rabbanan and according to Chachamim. According to Rabbi Yehuda, rather. Rabbi Yehuda. How is it a question according to Rabbi Yehuda? Rabbi Yehuda allows a shvura. And the Gemara says, well, you are considering this fat chore like shvura because it can't work. It can't even walk. But maybe Rabbi Yehuda only allows the shvura because it will never have refuah shenema. It will never become fit for work. It's shvura. It's missing a leg. It's never going to be able to. But this one, you starve it for a two, two three month period and it will become normal. You'll lose some weight. And it will be able to work again. So maybe that should be a problem because potentially social patams still could work. Can't work now, but you could starve them and, and make them healthier, and then they could work maybe down the road, two, three months down the road. So says the Gemara, the road Shvura will never be able to work. Aval high, but the social patam first wide line. The Himashile, if you wait and just uh, put them on a diet, Ati dechlar melacha could again go back to be able to be fit for melacha, and therefore it should be asur maybe, or dilma, or maybe afilu the rabbanan. Even according to rabbanan, lo asri hatam. Maybe rabbanan over there by shvura they make it asur. Ela destame lav neshchita because regular sh regular shvura. What do you do with it? Not necessarily you going to. Shecht it. A shvura is a shvura. You let it, let it be there. Maybe you impregnate them for, for next generation of, of cows and donkeys. But it's not pashut that a shvura, a, a lame animal, is going to be shechted. But a shor shel patam, a shor shel patam, a, a fattened uh, cow, when you sell a fattened cow, there's a market for it, 100% almost of the people who buy the shor shel patam, they want it for what? For shechita. You buy a fattened cow to shecht it and eat it. That's what you buy it for. That's why you pay the top dollar. So therefore, maybe even Rabbanan, who in the Mishnah disagree with Rabbi Yehuda, and they say, a lame animal you cannot sell to a goy, maybe even Rabbanan would agree over here that you should be able to sell it to a goy because it is sold for shechita purpose only. So says the Mara, you see, this is a question 
both for Rabbi Yehuda and for Rabbanan, and it's not so clear. So this is a question that we, they asked in the Bit Midrash. The Mara tries to bring a, a, a proof to see what the Alakha should be. Tashma, says the Gemara, third line down from the wide lines. Amar Rav Yehuda Amar Shmuel, Shel Bet Rebi, Hayu Makrivin Shor Shel Patam Biom Edam. Rebi, Rav Yehuda Anasi, his household would send a fattened cow to the, to the government Biom Edam. On their holiday. This was taxes that they charged, right? This is taxes that they charged the Goim, they charged the Jews, and Rabbi was, of course, the, uh, the leader of the Jewish community, and he was the Nasi, and hence he, he was the one selling it. Now, what's the problem with sell, sending a cow to the, to the Goim on their Yom Edam, on their holiday? Speak up. So that, that's good. All the Rishonim ask this question. Say, wait a second. Forget about the Gemara wants to suggest that the reason that Rebbe tried to stop this, because the Gemara is going to go say Rebbe spent a lot of money to stop this offering, so to speak, to the government. And the Gemara wants to suggest that maybe the problem was because he was giving a matana of shor shel patam, of a fattened cow, to the government. And you see from here that it's asur to sell a fattened cow to the goy. That's what the Gemara wants to say. Right? So all the Rishonim ask, they say, wait a second. Why do you have to say it's asur to send a fattened cow to the goy on their holiday because it's asur to sell during the year a fattened cow to the goy? Why do you have to say that? Why can't you just say simple? You know why Rebbe didn't want to send this? Because you're sending a matana to the of the avodah zarah to the to the pagans on their holiday. The first mishnah of the masechta was you can't do that. You can't send a mat you can't even do business with the uh, uh, pagans with the of the avodah zarah on the day of their holiday. You can't even do it three days prior. Oh, you forgot about the first Mishnah? That's a big question. What's the, what's the hit there? Like, everyone asks this question. So the, the best answer that, that, that it sits well, well with me um, is something along, along the, so, the, the, the lines of the fact that this was um, something that was constant. It was constant. Like the Ramban says this, this answer was a constant thing. Every year they did it. And be, when you do it constantly, every year, the goy is not going to come to think. Der avodah zarah, because you give your yearly thing. It's expected. When something is expected, you don't get excited about it to go thank your avodah zarah. Right? I would want to add probably a little element to it, even say stronger, that this was an obligatory tax that they had to have. When, you, when you're paying your dues, your obligation, it's not necessarily part of what the goy is going to get excited and go thank his gods, his, his avodah zarah, for, for the obligation that you have as a citizen to the government, right? So that's the, the, the way the Rishonim take care of it. There was an additional issue in the Mishnah, you remember. There are two problems. One was that he's going to azil ummodi. He's going to go and thank his avodah zarah. The second was, lifnei ver lo titel michshol, right? Because you're putting a stumbling block in front of them when they bring this as a korban, right? Now, the Rishonim say, Lifnei velotem michshol is only, as we had in the Gemara before, betere avri denara. When you are enabling the goy to do something they were not able to do before. In other words, if you are a nazir, nazir can't have wine, and you're chaloshing to have a cup of wine, and I have the only bottle, and you ask me, and I give it to you, then I'm lifnei velot de michshol. But if the wine is right over here on the table, it belongs to the nazir himself. And he's sitting on the other side of the room. He says, can you pass me the wine? Well, if you don't pass him the wine, he's going to get up and bring it himself. Right? There's no problem, no blockage there. In that case, you're not over on lifnei ver. You're still over on the rabbanan of mesayea bide ovre avera. 
you still over on, on you know, helping an Avera. Ravadia Yosef, Alava Shalom, he had a discussion of what happens if a father asks his son to give him, uh, to go buy him some cigarettes, right? Ravadia, starting from the year 81, already uh, wrote about whether or not smoking is, is mutar or asur, he always stayed away, uh, you know, being politically correct, stayed away from writing it's asur. He very highly encouraged people not to do it. And so towards the end of his life, he wrote it black and white, says, smoking asur, don't do it. And yet he discusses, oh, it's kvudavayev on one hand, and is, is, uh, on the other hand, it's something that's bad for him. Maybe it's lifnei ven lotem michshol. Can he buy it himself? Can he not buy it himself? Is it the cigarette in the other room? And he could get it himself and versus versus you being the only source of, of providing that for him and so on and so forth. So that's, that's an interesting um, topic. So Rishonim, right, over here, the Roman government didn't have any lack of any animals. They had any animal that they wanted. So it's not Lifnei Iver necessarily is considered. But so yeah, so it's a little bit better. But the Gemara, for our practical purposes, is discussing whether or not it's a Isur of selling a short patam, a fattened cow to a goy. Maybe that's why Rebbe was, was, was hesitant to, to send this korban, to send this, uh, this offering to the government. So says the Gemara, Chaser Dalet Rivevin, he spent 40,000 gold coins, says the Gemara, She'en makrivin oto hayom. He said, you know, I give you this, this bribe. He bribed the authorities in charge of this. He said, you know what? Just wait one day. Wait one day and, and bring it the day after the holiday. Then next year comes next year. Lemachar, chaser dalet riveven, she'en makrivin oto chayel shachut. Next year he said, you know, I, I, he paid another 40,000 gold coins that they should not bring it alive, but they should already bring it shechted from before, right? They should kill it and then bring it in front of the Abu Dazara. Right, in a Tikrovet Avodah Zarah is a problem if you do it, the, the Shechita, in front of the Avodah Zarah, in front of the idol, right? So if you, they bring it Shechita already, it's a little better. And the third and final year, what he did was, he spent another 40,000 gold coins, Shen Makrivin Oto Kelal, Kolikar. They, they, they stopped taxing um, Rebbe and his his uh, household, this tax, this offering altogether. They wrote in the rules, Rebbe is absolved uh, for perpetuity from paying th this tax forever. Still for a well, he, no, he paid altogether $120,000 uh, gold coins to get rid of this whole thing. Now, the Gwara says, the Gwara wants to suggest that Rebbe, who was so against this, is because he didn't want to sell a short shilpatam, a fattened cow to a goy. So you see from here that the question of the Bnei HaYeshiva, that they asked whether or not you could sell a short shilpatam to a goy, you should see from here that you can't. That's the suggestion of the Gemara, right? Because otherwise, why is Rebbe spending all this money to stop this? So says the Gemara, look at what the Gemara answers. My time Allah, why is it the Rebbe was so against it? Love me shum, dilma atul shahuye. Isn't it because maybe they're going to, to leave, it, leave it alive? You're sending this shol shal patama, maybe they're going to leave it alive and that will become a problem. The Gemara says, wait a second, that doesn't make any sense because ultamech, according to you, that the problem was leaving it alive. Why would Rebbe spend 40,000 gold coins for them to delay the hakrava one day? If the whole problem is, maybe they are not going to bring it all together, right? And they're going to stop it and keep it for themselves. And that would become the isur of, of selling a fattened cow to a goy. Think of what you're saying. He would pay for them not to shecht it? That's, that defeats the whole purpose. You want them to shecht it right away, if that's the problem. You don't, add a rabbi, you don't want them to keep it alive. Because that's the whole problem, according to you. So therefore, says the Gemara, that's not the reason at all. 
You know what the reason is? El Rebbe Meikar, meikar Miltabai. Rebbe, to begin with, wanted to, to stop this whole process of having to give this offering to the Goyim. Vesavar Yaker Vaati Purta Purta. Rebbe thought that this is going to be not possible to accomplish all at once. To tell them don't bring, don't charge us this tax altogether. So therefore, he did it in three steps, three different years. He paid bribe every year, and he made it happen. Now, the Ramban writes one of the reasons he didn't want it is because the Gemara says in Masechet Baba Batra Daf Zayin that Hamidech Chachamim are paturim from tax; they don't need protection of the government, and therefore they're paturim from from the the protection taxes of the government. And this was a form of tax. That he felt the, the, he himself as a Tamech Acham should be patur from, and hence he did away with it. Says the Gemara, uh, just fa- finally finishing the, the question of the Bnei Yeshiva, the Chimashule Bari Vavid Melacha, is if they actually starve this fattened cow, is it really going to become healthy enough to work again? And the Gemara says, Amar Rav Ashi, Amar Liz Vida. Rav Ashi said in the name of Zvida, this guy that was an expert in fattening cows, Bar Torah, if you have this, this fattened cow, you wait it, you, you, you wait for them to go on a diet, so to speak, you starve them little by little, and in course of a few months, they go back to shape. Not only they become healthy enough to work, but they will work twice as much as a regular cow that was never fattened. So therefore, you have this issue of a fattened cow being sold to the goy. It seems from the Gemara at the end that over here, Rabbanan would certainly not agree with it, and they would um, maintain that it would still be Asur. But Zat Hashem will, will continue to start the next Mishnah in the days to come. Zaku Baru. Bye bye bye.